Hello everyone and welcome back into the Blopar YouTube channel today with myself Joe Stevens. Now I always say welcome back into these videos but uh, if you are new around here welcome into the Blopar YouTube channel. We make golf content all the time. Very vague description there all the time but welcome into the channel. I am one of two content creators here for Blopar. My name is Joe Stevens and Joe Lovery is the other professional who makes content for this channel. We're starting to gain some real, really nice momentum at the moment. We're getting some really nice comments, building a really nice community. So if you haven't already, if you are a new viewer or viewed a few videos before and haven't yet subscribed, please do press that subscribe button. It really does help us out. Now today, I'm gonna to take you through the five biggest and most common mistakes that I see golfers make out on the golf course, whether it's a beginner or an experienced golfer. I'm gonna take you through these five mistakes. And if, uh, if you're one of these people, drop a comment down below, let us know. Without further ado, this is going to be a nice, short, quick fire video and we're going to explain each point as we go. Mistake number one, hitting from the fairways with your irons. The golfer that tries to help the ball in the air. Let's have a chat about that one. The things we like to see, this is one of them in the golfing world. My ball is on the fairway and I'm hitting my shot up towards the green. I've got a perfect yardage for my seven iron and I'm ready to hit it. Let's talk you through this common mistake that I see golfers make. So looking at common mistake number one then is helping the golf ball up in the air. How many of your friends, or maybe it's you, look a little bit like this on their follow through of their golf shots. All their weight finishes in their right hand side. What we need to realize is our golf clubs have loft for a reason. The loft is, which is what launches the golf ball up in the air for us. We don't need to make compensations within our swing in order to try and get that golf ball up in the air. The only thing that we will be achieving by doing this is by catching the ball heavy, which is the most likely, or even a little bit thin. So if I'm setting up to my golf shot, I need to be feeling as if I'm releasing through into my left hand side in order to get that golf ball first, rather than if my chest is hanging back and all my weight is in my right hand side as I come through the golf ball the most likely scenario is that I'm going to catch that ground before my club is going to bottom out early or I'll miss the ground altogether and my club will be rising up through the golf ball and I will catch it thin which is a disaster for any sort of golfer so we need to start to think about how we move through the golf ball and it's quite simply swinging up to the top of your backswing into your right foot I'll drop a card above. I've, uh, I've, got a, I've got a video on how to strike your irons pure every single time. And this is the general premise of the video, but go and check out the full video in full. We're swinging up to our right foot and making sure we transfer that weight through to our left foot in order to get that golf ball first. We don't need to help this golf ball up in the air. The loft does the work for us. So with that in mind then, common mistake number one, we're gonna get rid of that now by transferring our weight into our left side and not trying to help the golf ball up into the air. Not bad for first swing of the day there. We'll take that one. Always replace your divots. Let's move on to point number two. I'll see you there. Mistake number two then. We're just off the green. We've got plenty of green to work with pretty tight lie so not the easiest but also not the hardest we're not in knee high rough mistake number two is using too much unnecessary loft around the greens now for experienced golfers using a lot of loft around the greens even when it's not necessarily recommended can get away with this it's not necessarily a wrong choice but I see it as a much more sensible choice to take the least loft possible it's much, much easier to get the golf ball rolling early than it is trying to fly the golf ball the whole way. Let me grab another golf ball and show you a really good example. So I've got my two golf balls then. We're going to ignore the clubs for now. I would be as bold as to say, 90% of the people watching this video, if I was to ask you to throw this golf ball as close as possible to that flag, it would look a little bit like this one. Nice underarm throw, getting the golf ball rolling out towards the target. Not a bad result. Using too much loft is the equivalent of throwing this golf ball overarm and high. Look how much harder it is to control 
<laughs> I'll get this right now. By throwing it over arm and really, really high. It comes up way short because that golf ball lands and stops really, really quickly because the arc is so much higher and it's coming down at a steeper angle. It's the same equivalent of using the two different clubs I'm about to show you now. I'm going to get the balls and show you. Okay, so we're back in the same place then. I'm going to hit the first one with lots and lots of loft. So I've got my 58 degree. It's got a low bounce, so it should be made a little bit easier from this tie to lie. We'll put it on a nice lie for the purpose of the video as well. Um, but I would back myself nine times out of 10 to get the golf ball closer to the hole with my eight iron than I would my lob wedge. We're just gonna hit one shot each for the purpose of this quick fire video. But this golf ball is gonna to have to come out a little bit higher. And I'm gonna to have to create much more club head speed. Therefore, it's gonna be harder to control. I've actually played an absolute gem, but that's because I play golf a lot. But for beginner golfers to control their 58 degree consistently around the greens, it's not easy. Let's go to the eight iron and show you how much more controlled it looks and it will be. So same sort of motion, but obviously all we're doing now is just trying to brush the grass and almost, almost feeling as if it's a putting stroke. So a little bit of loft on this eight iron, just gonna help this golf ball pop up in the air and release out towards the target. The same difference as the throws we showed you earlier. So I'm really glad, glad that was a good one as well. <laughs> it would have been a really, really bad example otherwise. So guys, hopefully that one makes sense. That's mistake number two, using too much loft around the greens. You'll find it so, so much easier where you can to get that golf ball rolling as quickly as possible. Common mistake number three then, and it's pulling out a driver just because it's a par four or par five and you want the golf ball to go as far as possible. Quite a lot of the time you'll be hitting driver off of par fours and par fives, but think about the hole, know your distances. I know as a beginner golfer, you're not gonna be knowing your distances to the exact yard, but you'll know roughly how far your driver goes. For example, for me on this hole, driver actually goes to the narrow part of the fairway. If I take 20 yards off of my tee shot, I'm actually hitting to the wider part of the fairway and actually my scores are going to lower considerably and more consistently, purely because I'm hitting more fairways and not bringing the danger into play. So I'm gonna club down, hit my three wood, and I'm in the wider part of the fairway. I've got more to aim at. This is how you're going to lower your scores. So I've used the correct thought process then. I'm gonna pick a nice, easy aiming point and make my confidence swing to the widest part of the fairway. Pushed it a little bit to the right, but as I said, I'm hitting to the widest part and I've caught a piece of the fairway. Just. <laughs> so it's time for point number four then. And this one is a really, really common one and something that's not really addressed by golfers enough. And it's something that a professional like myself or Joe would pick up on so, so quickly. The white knuckles effect, gripping the club too tight. I understand why people do this. They want to feel nice and solid. They don't want the club to slip in their hands. But as soon as you start to grip this club too tight, the release is going to be restricted or non-existent, okay? So we need to find a way to get rid of that white knuckle effect, gripping the handle too tight, the grip too tight. Because what will happen is if we're gripping it too tight, we're gonna see that golf ball go right nine and a half times out of 10. We need to find a way to get this club flowing through the golf ball and releasing. Not flipping, but by reducing the tightness of our grip, we're going to see that golf club naturally rotate over. We're going to find that we square the golf club up so much more often. So with that in mind, the best way to do this, is we're going to set up to each of our golf shots. If we start to feel that we're getting a little bit tight, all we're going to do is actually grip the club tighter and then just start to release that off. Once we've released that pressure and we can start to feel the club move a little bit more freely. If I'm really, really tight, everything goes together and you can really feel that in the hands. 
once you've reduced that start to feel the handle almost almost move around as you do this in your hands once you've taken that grip nice and loose almost do a few sort of Jason Duffner-esque waggles where you can feel that golf club releasing once you've set up to your golf ball you can start to swing through with freedom so that's point number four don't strangle the grip the white knuckle effect fifth and final point now this is one that I see probably the most of out of all five of these and this is downhill putts quitting on downhill putts it's a really really easy thing to do the best golfers in the world do it if they're not confident when I say quitting on I mean a big deceleration and a really short follow-through trying to just just hope that golf ball gets anywhere near the hole but quite often what we see is the golf ball takes a lot of the break because the golf ball is not going as fast as you would first intended and we see quite often in this scenario the golf ball landing up short of the hole which means your second putt is still downhill with quite a bit of break potentially left in that putt which means you've got a lot of work to do to hold that second putt we need to start getting that ball releasing out towards the hole I'm not saying whack everything past to make sure everything's got a chance because you've probably got double the length coming back if you start to hit that golf ball but what we're after here is to start to feel a much more pendulum like flow regardless of the putt that you've got now the best way to think about this is adjusting the length of putt in your head obviously for an uphill putt you can potentially picture a flat putt that you're thinking about hitting it, the golf ball further so rather than thinking the fact that it's downhill just think that it's a slightly shorter putt so for this one here I'd probably want to take three feet off of the distance of this putt in my head and the way that I stroke the golf club and almost feel as if I'm hitting a flat putt to something that's closer to me that's going to help me flow through that putt much more easily and it should start to eliminate out the back of our mind the fact that it's downhill and it's a little bit quick so all I'm going to think about here is rather than decelerating and hoping that golf ball is going to go somewhere near the flag I'm going to do a couple of practice strokes trying to match my backstroke with my through stroke in length nice tempo looking at the um, distance that I want to feel as I'm hitting this putt take my line and just let that putter flow through the line of the golf ball so it makes it to pin high fractionally short it's the first putt I've hit on this green so I'm actually quite pleased with the effort bit of a four left but with a little bit more pace it would start to creep around the corner so hopefully this really helps you and let me know in the comments if you if you agree with my theory there or disagree with my theory it's just something that i find golfers find easy to grasp and start to improve their putting as a result guys really hope you've enjoyed today's video it's a little bit of a different one if you enjoyed it we'll we'll do a few more of more advanced points potentially maybe even some more basic ones like we said at the beginning if you haven't already please do press that subscribe button if you're new here or if you're a regular viewer and you haven't yet subscribed it really does help us out if you click that red button for us uh, Joe and I are actually getting together over the next few weeks to film some videos and content together. Some exciting news coming up for the channel as well. Slightly outside of the channel, but we'll keep you posted on that one. Hope you have a really good morning, afternoon, evening, whenever you're watching this, and we'll see you in the next one.